So uh, today I'm just going to go over um, like a handful of books that um, I'm recommending for anyone who is sort of pandemic um, shelter in place quarantine. So I'm going to start with this first book. Uh, these are all diversity books. So this first book is um, Birdsong and it's by uh, Julie Flett who is Native American. Um, and she's just, she is both the illustrator um, and the author of this book. Um, and it's really a, a story about a single mom and a daughter who move to a new place. And they have a new neighbor who is uh, a little bit elderly. Um, and that neighbor sort of helps this young girl kind of find her way, you know, because it's, it's difficult moving. Um, and it helps reconnect her for her love of drawing. So in a way, this might also be autobiographical. Um, and so they have this very lovely friendship, the, the, the young girl and this um, older neighbor uh, woman, kind of almost like a, like a grandmother figure to her. Um, and then towards the end of the book, end of the story, you know, she gets, she's, she, um, she's not doing well. She's like, she's ill. Um, and so that girl um, kind of shares her art with her, she, uh, does like show, um, draws all these pictures of birds to kind of brighten up her room and to cheer her up and they and she and her mom take care of this neighbor they bring her food and they keep her company um and then eventually um you know the woman passes away and so it's also a story that um for those of us um i mean just because there's so many people affected by covid um it's also a story of sort of coming to terms um, with loss and grief and it's, just a, it's a beautiful story about helping others in community as well. Um, so my next story is by, it's a picture book, it's by Alan Say. And so he is half Japanese, half Chinese like me, which I discovered, which I thought was pretty exciting because you don't see that a lot. Um, and this picture book um, he wrote, wrote and illustrated, it's called Almond. And to me, I, the reason why I picked this as a shelter in place quarantine story is it's about finding um, like your hidden passion, your hidden talent. And in this case, this little girl, Almond, um, thinks like she's only really known for having, you know, beautiful Asian hair. Um, and she gets picked to be in a play, Rapunzel, and she thinks it's, you know, it's because of my hair. Um, and there's another little girl that is new to her class who is like a virtuoso on the violin, and she kind of admires her because she has this, like, amazing talent, amazing musical gift. But then as they um, uh, perform the play together, um, Ahmed as the Rapunzel and this uh, violinist as the musical accompaniment, she discovers that um, through her friend, the violinist says like, you know, your talent is you're so good at pretending and pretending to be other people that you're very believable. And so she thinks, oh, well then maybe I'm an actress. And so I just, like, my message to those of us who have kids at home now for, you know, one month plus, and it's, it's so hard for them to do the Zoom and try to do academic learning, is to maybe use this time to explore um, other interests and other passions. Um, my kids are learning, um, we're exploring, you know, cooking, um, sewing, um, we're, we're planning to do a woodworking project as soon as it warms up. But um, yeah, so this is a book just to remind people that they all have talents um, and interests that are worth exploring now that, you know, we actually have the gift of time. Um, and my next is a picture book, and it's by Kelly Starling Lyons, illustrated by Daniel Minter. And I, this got a lot of awards in the ALA this year, um, and I love it. Um, and it's just, it's a, it's a picture book about, um, going home, um, down south to visit family. So this, they're kind of doing a road trip down to see family. Um, but then part of the road trip is not just, um, you know, visiting with relatives, especially grandparents, but it's also reconnecting with their roots and taking pride in their family history. And in this case, uh, they are, um, you know, th their ancestors were enslaved, um, African Americans, um, and the grandparents and the great grandparents even have really overcome that. Um, uh, the, they have bought the farm, they own the farm now, um, and they have built a, a, a pretty successful life. And it's just sort of like, 
acknowledging the difficulties um, and really celebrating the grit and determination and hard work that made this family um, so resilient and successful. And I think right now, like as we're all going through, you know, a lot of time with family, it's just a nice book to, to remind ourselves uh, how lucky we are, how lucky we are to have family and in difficult times, to, how strong we are as a family as well. Um, and so now I'm gonna do um, switching to early chapter books. So this chapter book is a new series called Girls Survive. It's by Capstone. Um, and there, there's, um, I have, I got three to review and I see three more that I don't have. So I think there's at least six out. And it's basically um, historical fiction um, um, told by um, a different author each time. Usually the author can be more connected to what happened. And in this case, it's an Asian author talking about the great um, earthquake in San Francisco, specifically in Chinatown. And what I really love about this series is that it's very dramatic and exciting. Um, it's also completely grounded in, his, in history um, and in social justice um, issues. And so in this case, it's not just about the earthquake in San Francisco that was so devastating, but it's specifically in Chinatown and it talks about the racism that the family faced and once um, the devastation happened in Chinatown, how, you know, it kind of hints at that, you know, there weren't a lot of options to live once your home gets destroyed, but um, this family was able to, to um, relocate to Oakland in the midst of this chaos and danger going on, but the family gets separated. So it's this um, sister who has to care for a little brother and a neighbor as well. And also goes over the structural racism, the laws that were in place then that affected uh, Asian Americans, especially the Chinese. And so in this age of, um, uh, you know, sort of racism around, um, you know, anti-Asian, anti-Chinese, I just thought like this is a, um, an interesting story about another crisis and how um, it's very easy to scapegoat. But, um, you know, there's just a long history of racism against Asians. Um, and in this case, it's more specific about Chinese Americans, but certainly isn't limited to them. And I just wanted to share, oops, sorry, had a little disaster there. Um, I wanted to share a book that I wrote, actually, that is out through Scholastic. And it's only available um, either through their website, and I have a link on my blog, um, or through Scholastic Book Club. But right now, with a lot of um, classroom uh, schools that are not um, physically meeting, I'm not, I'm not sure if those um, flyers are actually being distributed. But anyway, this was a book I wrote. Um, and I thought it'd be great in celebration of um, May, which is um, Asian Pacific um, American Month, uh, Heritage Month. Um, and just because I had noticed there's, you know, if you look for um, Asian American, um, you know, biographies, there's like some, but there's not a ton. On, and also what I found so interesting is that there's a lot of famous people and people might not know that they are Asian Pacific American, such as Dwayne Johnson, The Rock, who is Samoan, uh, half, half Samoan, or uh, Bruno Mars, who is uh, Filipino um, amongst his multi-ethnic background. Um, and so anyway, I just wanted to share that, that this is out, um, and it covers, let's see, 18 Asian Pacific American leaders. Um, so we got Chloe Kim, on the cover as well. So um, all kinds of um, different career paths um, and sort of their um, biography. And I'll give you a, a page. So it's um, uh, photographs as illustrations and then it has just, you know, sort of a page of text with a like little, you know, sort of factoid. So anyway, I hope, um, I hope people will um, Consider this if they're looking for more Asian Americans uh, to learn about and celebrate for May. Um, and the last one is this, um, uh, I guess it's young adults, but it's probably 12, 12 and up. And, um, and I, I, I've read this twice now because I really love this. And it came out I, 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 maybe like a couple of weeks ago. So it's called Yes, No, Maybe So. 
And it's actually jointly written by Becky Albertalli and Aisha Saeed, both um, New York Times bestselling authors uh, with a lot of accolades. And so it's, it's basically, they wrote um, sort of alternating chapter book. And so it's um, a story about Jamie Goldberg, who is Jewish, and I believe Becky probably wrote that one. And then Maya Ryman, um, she is Muslim. She's having the worst Ramadan ever. Um, um, and it's just, what, what I love about it is that um, it's a story about activism and almost like accidental stumbling into activism and finding out how powerful like individuals can um, be just by getting involved in ways that don't seem mind blowing, but actually kind of are. Um, but I also love, um, it's also like a love story, like a PG, like very, like just kissing. Um, but it's very sweet. Like I love that kind of a YA sweet love story. Um, and it's also like Maya, Maya's parents are separate, are just separating in the, in the beginning of this book. And so it's her adjustment to that. Jamie's parents have been divorced for a while and her, his dad actually lives, um, in Amsterdam, in, um, in the Netherlands. So they don't, he doesn't see him that much. So he's like more well adjusted to it. Um, but it's sort of how they end up sort of door to door, um, you know, working on behalf of the political campaign. And I didn't realize it because I didn't read the very first page when I first read it, but it's something that also Becky and Aisha did because um, they live in Georgia um, and they had a special election that was, you know, sort of one of those like um, feels super critical and they literally went door to door campaigning as well. Um, and so also what is so great about this book is that even though it's written by two different people with two characters, it, it's very seamless. Like it feels as if one person wrote it. Um, a lot of times when there's two authors with alternating, um, you know, uh, chapters or, or multiple characters, it, sometimes I feel like, oh, I really loved one character more than the other. Um, um, but in this case, it's, it's so seamless. Um, and I really love, um, both characters equally and Jamie Goldberg, I feel like is such an, uh, even though, um, it's written by a female, it, it just feels like such an authentic portrayal of a teenager because, um, I have a son who's 15, uh, freshman in high school. So a little bit younger than this character, but like literally my son talks and says the same kinds of phrasing and, um, things that Jamie does. Um, and so I just felt like, like, you know, like she really nailed it because I can really relate as a mom of a teenager. Um, but I just thought this was just hit so many um, buttons for me. Like it just is a great love story. It's very sweet. It's a, a diverse because you have Jamie who's um, Jewish and he has a crush on Maya who is Muslim. Um, but um there's like, there's kind of like a small barrier from religion, but in fact, their mothers are best friends and they sort of grew up uh, together when they were very, very small, but they went to different high schools. Um, it has that activism piece, um, you know, and so I think um, for those of us who are uh, quarantined for, uh, for uh, COVID-19, um, you know, this is a great book to say, you know, activism at even, even at an age where you're not even old enough to vote, um, matters and it's kind of inspires, inspires me in that way. So anyway, thank you so much for, um, uh, this pretty long, um, book talk. Um, I hope you, um, will leave your suggestions for books that you're enjoying, uh, if you, uh, are also quarantined or just not quarantined, just, uh, finding books that you love. Uh, with your children. So thank you so much.